The GIGN is the elite tactical unit of the French National Police. It focuses on countering acts of terror, protecting VIPs, and rescuing hostages. It was formed in response to the 1972 Munich incident at the Summer Olympics. In 1973, the GIGN, composed of highly trained officers, was brought into existence, under the leadership of then-Lieutenant Christian Pratou. The GIGN became operational in March 1974 and pulled off their first successful mission a mere 10 days later. The GIGN was established within the Gendarmerie's Parachute Squadron. This move boosted the GIGN's group from 15 to 32 members. During that very year, the GIGN made a name for itself with a daring hostage rescue mission that went down in history. On the morning of February 3, 1976, things took a bad turn in what was then known as the French territory of Afar and ISIS, now recognized as Djibouti. Four militants from the Somali Coast Liberation Front hijacked a school bus. These militants were supported by the new Somali government. They aimed to liberate the territory from French governance and incorporate it into Somalia. There were 31 kids on the bus, and they were the sons and daughters of French military personnel stationed in the TFAI, making them prime targets for the militants. Under the militants' command, they made the bus driver head to Loyata, the only border crossing between TFAI and Somalia back then. Ignoring a police checkpoint, the bus raced through, and the militants shot at the pursuing police. When they reached Loyata, the bus was halted by soldiers from the 13th Foreign Legion Half Brigade, a unit of the French Foreign Legion permanently stationed in the TFAI. Negotiations happened until French officials allowed the bus to pass the checkpoint and park in the space between the borders, just a short distance from the Somali checkpoint. After getting the urgent news about the hostages, the GIGN rushed to the location for their first mission outside of France. On the morning of February 4th, Christian led a nine-man sniper team into action and joined forces with the Foreign Legion. The GIGN snipers took their positions about 90 yards ahead of the Legionnaires. At the same time, the militants got reinforcements from Somali army troops across the border. The newly formed and not so well-known GIGN wasn't exactly trusted by the Foreign Legion. Plus, these GIGN guys rolled up with their long hair and civilian clothes. Christian, their leader, even rocked glasses and got teased by the Foreign Legion general. Yet, the only workable rescue plan hinged on the GIGN team. The goal was clear. Take out the four militants on the bus. That way, the legionnaires could storm in, set up defenses, and fend off the Somali army while making sure the kids got out safe. To make it work, they had to set up a synchronized sniper shot. The snipers did a countdown from left to right in French when they had a clear shot. This went down the line to ensure everyone was ready to shoot. If a sniper didn't have a good shot, He'd speak up, and they'd reset. If everyone was good to go, the commander would count to three, and on the third count, all the snipers would fire together, taking out their targets at the same time. At 3.45 p.m. on February 4th, the GIGN snipers pulled off a flawless synchronized shot, getting rid of all four militants on the bus. The legionnaires on foot trying to cover the 300 yards to reach the school bus got held back by machine gun fire from Somalia across the border. To make things worse, there was a fifth militant hiding in the bushes near the bus all night. He noticed what was happening and quickly rushed onto the bus and fired his weapon, unfortunately taking the life of a girl. Seeing that most of the Foreign Legion was pinned down, two GIGN operators dropped their sniper rifles and ran towards the bus with their revolvers. The militant on the bus injured a legionnaire who tried to confront him and used one of the hostages as a human shield. Despite facing enemy machine gun fire, the GIGN operators reached the bus. One of them carefully aimed the revolver and took a shot at the militant, successfully putting an end to the threat. The legionnaires and their armored vehicles finally reached the bus to protect the children during the evacuation. By 4.05 p.m., the fighting had stopped, along with the tragic loss of one girl 
Five other kids got injured in the clash. A boy and a girl among them were seriously hurt and quickly taken to France. The boy survived but had lasting injuries, and he eventually died in 2014. In total, 20 militants and Somali soldiers were wounded, and 7 militants lost their lives. The 1976 Loyata hostage rescue mission not only showcased the effectiveness of the GIGN synchronized sniper shot, but also led to its integration in the training of other elite specialized units. And in 2009, the synchronized shot gained widespread recognition after SEAL Team 6 successfully rescued Captain Phillips from Somali pirates. But let us know what you think in the comments section below. If you found this content entertaining or helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more content like this one. And thanks for watching.